Let's finish up by discussing cardiac tamponade. So what is cardiac tamponade? This is the compression of the heart by fluid. It's going to decrease the cardiac output because it's going to decrease the ability of the heart to relax and take in more blood and then pump that out. So our cardiac output will decrease with the cardiac tamponade. As you see in this picture here, what is happening is the pericardial space or that sac that surrounds the heart is filling up with fluid. What can that fluid be? It could be blood. It could be effusions. Um, we most commonly see this in some sort of a heart injury uh, where it fills with blood. A characteristic of cardiac tamponade is that all four chambers of the heart have equal diastolic pressures. Findings include Beck's triad. Beck's triad is characterized by hypotension, distended neck veins, and distant heart sounds. We can also see in cardiac tamponade an increase in heart rate pulsus paradoxus, and we'll discuss that here in just a minute. Our ECG will show low voltage QRS and electrical alternans. So what is pulsus paradoxus? Pulsus paradoxus is a decrease in the amplitude of our systolic blood pressure by more than 10 milligrams of mercury during inspiration. So if our normal resting systolic blood pressure is 120, upon inspiration with someone that has a cardiac tamponade, They'll, their increase in their blood pressure, their systolic blood pressure, will go up to at least 130, if not more, when they inspire. There is a mnemonic that we can use for cardiac tamponade to know what can cause this pulsus paradoxus. PCOAT is the mnemonic. So pulsus paradoxus can be caused by constrictive pericarditis and other obstructive pulmonary diseases such as croup, OSA, or obstructive sleep apnea, asthma, COPD, which is not part of PCOAT, and then the T, finally, is a cardiac tamponade. So pulsus paradoxus is caused by pericarditis, croup, obstructive sleep apnea, asthma, and tamponade.